They come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Little books and boxes concealing the fire within. But sparks of creativity can turn matchbooks from simple fire starters into tiny works of art. They are. They're design gems. Richard Green is what's called a voluminist. I don't particularly like that. Okay, matchbook collector. I prefer the term matchheads. You might say he wears his passion for his hobby on his sleeve. Do you ever walk by a matchbook or box that you don't take? Oh, absolutely, all the time. Those ugly, plain white ones. <laughs> you have standards. Oh, absolutely. Don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? I'll show you a beautiful one. This is a favorite of mine. The first thing I look at is the design. When you open it up and you look at it inside, it's got Fu Manchu on every match. And so I look at it to see how the type has been used, whether they've used the format of the matchbook in some clever way. Some are clearly quite clever. Others, quite elaborate. The matchsticks themselves, part of the design. Green's collection of more than a quarter million matchbooks. This one happens to be for embalming fluid. and it's a Catalogs how historically they have been used to sell everything from paintbrushes to politicians. Some are rare, some are and, racy. Uh, this is, happens to be called a feely. It's slightly embossed in certain areas. And some are racist. And here we have some political parties such as the Ku Klux Klan and the John Birch Society. More than a century ago, Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was the first business to see the potential in matchbooks as mini billboards. Twenty silent salesmen tucked inside. Other companies soon followed. You just wouldn't be in business without having a matchbook. There is debate about who invented the matchbook. In 1892, Pennsylvania patent attorney Joshua Pusey filed a patent for what he called the flexible match. It was meant to be attached to and enclosed by a suitable cover, folded and adapted to be open and closed as the covers of a book. But Charles Bowman, another Pennsylvanian, patented the matchbook design we know today. These four words are among the most commonly printed phrases of all time. But the matchbook itself has long been under fire, replaced in large part by the disposable lighter and seemingly made irrelevant by smoking bans that have swept the country in the past decade. We have matchbooks available at the front desk uh, every day. Michael LaMonico is chef and managing partner at Porterhouse Bar and Grill in New York City. His is one of many restaurants, bars, and hotels that are giving the matchbook a second chapter. I get to remind people who've been here that they have been here. And this remembrance that they take with them, this little memory box, uh, they get to keep, remember that they've been here, and tell their friends about us. Here are a couple of what we call barrels. But for Richard Green, it's not just about advertising. Matchbooks tell a story. Our collective history, the good and the bad, one square inch at a time. Matches encompass every aspect of popular culture, whether it's entertainment or politics or industry or business, art, design, typography, whatever it is, music, they're all in matches.